Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the gift. We would love to um, share with you this morning about a new book we have coming out, which you guys have heard about, and um, you're going to start seeing much more of Jenny and Greg Donner sharing about it. And that is who I'm joined by today. I'm joined by Greg, Greg Donner in Camus and Jenny Donner up at the Monastery Angels Landing. Beautiful. Yeah, well, the, the book is called This Moment is Your Miracle, and my inspiration today is to join here and um, explore with you, Jenny, and you, Greg, just your experience of the content of this book. Because when we were just speaking this morning, actually, and that's what you said you were in, so inspired to share about, actually, it was so close to your heart. And like, as you shared your background, um, I'm wondering if maybe you just feel to elaborate on that a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I was, uh, I was, I am an ex-Christian, <laughs> and I feel like I am a Christian in a true, true way, um, because of the, the Christ, the message of the Christ, the message of, yeah, of our true identity and how to undo the blocks to that. In that sense, uh, I'm a Christian, but the old Christian way didn't work, and um, so I. Uh, I remember my own struggles of wanting to find God, wanting to find the truth, and uh, and it was it was was hard because the, the Christianity that is taught in the Western world is a lot about sin and guilt. Um, so it took a lot to get out of um, of that belief that you sin every day and you're you know uh, um, you're very you get very guilt ridden. Um, so for me to genuinely be able to reach the ones that are going through what I've gone through, um, yeah, it's, it's truly inspiring. I'm very, very grateful to be able to, to, uh, put forward David's teaching that way. And he was also a Christian. He grew up Christian too. So it's very, yeah, it's very close to all our hearts. It's been amazing to use this as a tool. You know, it could be early in the morning and we're, we're sinking in beneath our thoughts. But then when we get up and go about our day, we have relationships, we have jobs, we have um, situations that you know, we're simply projecting onto. And the exercises are very, they're, they're direct questions. Uh, there's journaling and, and inquiry to sort of investigate what's happening. Um, and then, like I was saying too, there's, there's, um, a prayer aspect to, to it as well. So it's, it, it comes back to, I would say, um, yeah, our heart in a lot of ways. Yeah. And when you, when you do, when you start doing the exercises, you will see that you will see your mind. It's inevitable that you don't see, your, you will see exactly what you believe, um, with all the inquiries and um yeah to to really see the thoughts because the spiritual path is so much about mind training and mind watching and start to learn to to catch or to see what's happening in the mind all the time um so so the book is going to do that and 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 doing that is going to clear it it's going to clear the mind and there is yeah, I think this book is a bit humorous too. There's a lot of fun examples. Um, like it's practical throughout and like with guidance, I know somewhere it's talking about um, how when you truly hear guidance, it's a synergy, it's a flow, and it's a very deep experience of everything working together. And there's one example with like if you're in a relationship and one part says uh, I'm not guided to take out the trash well I'm not guided to take out the trash either you know that that's like an example of how it can go in relationships and that's an example of how the spirit is not working um the spirit is not working with you know individual that one person has certain guidance and another one has different guidance no when you're in guidance, you're in the flow. And so it's many examples like that. And then the practical way to how you work with your mind to actually get to the experience of, of the flow. 
And we need that practicality, that step-by-step, -step, how do I apply this to, I don't feel to take out the trash, actually. We also want to actually take you through one of the, the exercises here today. And I think, Jenny, you felt some inspiration to guide us through the golden platter exercise. So we've got about seven minutes or so where we can just really drop into that together and invite the experience. Can um, do this exercise. So if everyone just starts by just sitting real comfortably and uh, relax, maybe take a deep breath and close your eyes. This is going to be a few minutes long and you, you're going to go into your mind. So just make space for this now for a while. Close your eyes and take as much time as you need to feel present and focused. As you move through this assignment, I encourage you to allow any reactions or emotions to come up freely. Don't restrict or censor yourself. Think of an area in your life where you feel you need some direction right now, big or small. Close your eyes and relax into a space where you feel attentive, clear, and calm. Bring this area to mind and hold it in awareness as you prepare to offer it to the Holy Spirit. Allow for any images to appear in your mind that represent the essence of this issue. Take your time. When you have your issue clear and what you would like to hand over, imagine a large round golden platter in front of you and see yourself placing your issue on this golden platter and offering it to spirit. You can think of spirit as a vast warm light. Then let it go. Don't think about it. Try not to think of anything at all. You have brought your issue to the spirit. Now relax. You give yourself over to the Holy Spirit completely in this moment. Stay in this place of communion with the Holy Spirit for as long as you feel helpful. Just be in this moment without expectation. Now exercise your willingness and present capacity to trust. If you find yourself reverting back to worrying about the situation and taking it back into your mind, that's okay. Just relax and forgive yourself and just begin again by placing the issue on the platter and offering it to spirit. Let it go. Take your time. Just know that whether you get a specific answer or not now, you can feel calm and reassured because you have handed it over to Spirit. He will guide you. Drop any desire for a particular outcome, but remain alert and expect miracles. We have a prayer, a prayer for guidance. 
I open my heart to you, Holy Spirit. I am willing to ask you guide my every step and to follow you, for I know this is my way home. Help me to be in a consistent state of peace, to let go of all my resistance, my fears, and the conflicting wishes that stop me from knowing your peace and guidance. Amen. And now, as you come out of the meditation and the prayer, just stay with a sense of calm and connection and know that divine guidance has you. Allow yourself to be open as to, to know what to do next. Be alert to feeling or hearing from within an answer or a direction to take can come from external signs or symbols through what someone says or just as a feeling from within. It can be a feeling of a yes or a no. Watch out for any tendency to use the ego intellect. Instead, allow your intuition, the Holy Spirit, to lead you. No matter what the guidance is, Trust that it will be what makes you happy if you follow it. For God's will is for your happiness. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jenny and Greg, for joining me today. I feel so grateful for tools like this because we can't do this alone and we wouldn't want to. And this book, Our Mighty Companions, the gifts coming your way, I just feel like this is like the blessings rain down. So for the mind that really wants to wake up, there's just nothing stopping us, actually. And... <clears throat> I'm grateful for the show, this opportunity to share, expand my mind, and to join with Jenny, to join with Greg, and to just share with all of you. So thank you so much, and um, we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kristen. <laughs>